One Piece made the Guinness World Records for more published copies of any single series by a single author. Congratulations. I really like how Oda drew each of the Straw Hats wearing different clothing from different countries. I'm assuming those are the countries that actually publish One Piece, like in volume form. Published comic book series. Sorry, because I'm guessing novels and books and comic books are like two different categories. Now let's get into this chapter. <laughs> oh, seriously? It's over. The longest arc of this entire series is finally coming to a close. And I have to admit, I have kind of mixed feelings about this because I don't know if my man Sabo is going to leave the story and not be here for a while, okay? Speaking of my man Sabo, August 22nd episode of Sabo. It's the story of how Sabo became my man Sabo and a pimp to Koala. We open up and the birdcage is no longer a cage, more like a bird spike. Rebecca just straight up fucking crying. She gets saved by law from Doflamingo's awakening mode. By the way, those strings have hockey on their tips. Some of them do end up hitting Luffy. Law switches Rebecca out of there. She falls and we get an ass shot from her. I'm not really sure what Oda's intention was in creating Rebecca as a character. I will say that if she wasn't in Dressrosa, this arc would have been a little bit shorter. I've said this again and again, but seriously, props to Doflamingo. He does his thing. I don't care that he got KO'd. We knew that was gonna happen, but he has been doing his thing. Like he turns the entire area into strings so he can manipulate it with awakening mode. He uses like these string spikes, hockeys them up, and then they come together to form like these wings and they close in on Luffy. I don't know how Luffy was able to tank or take that shit. I honestly don't. It's like, even with armament hockey, because he does activate it, during that attack, he can't move because strings from the ground are holding him still. So either Luffy got really, really good at countering and tanking sharp objects, which in theory should be his weakness, or those hockey imbued spikes slash feathers slash wings aren't really as powerful as they appear, but they appear mad powerful. Like they, they hit Luffy, they send him crashing over to the fucking hill. And then Doflamingo sends another row of them to mess him up. So it's like, I guess it's because I'm not really used to Luffy tanking or taking hits from things that are sharp, but he is losing a lot of blood. And so after that final attack that he did, all I'm saying is it's a good thing Law is there. Get a brief flashback of Rayleigh. He's smiling saying, oh, you almost died again. Dang it. Doflamingo's using Parasite on him and he breaks out of it by going into gear fourth. Now, I do have to mention this. During Marineford, Diamond Jozu wasn't able to break out of this shit. And he was part of Whitebeard's crew. Doflamingo had him on lock. So what does that mean? That Luffy can bust out of this and Jozu can't or couldn't. That One Piece power scale, it's, it's getting real broken right about now. Although to be fair, I will admit that, you know, Luffy is disgusting when he's fighting, but he does need an excessive amount of like time to heal and recuperate. In true shonen style fashion, we have an exchange of words between the protagonist and the antagonist. Um, Luffy, what he says doesn't really stand out. It's just basically him saying, I'm tired of this shit. And Doflamingo, what he says, it's a little bit more, you know, characterization for him because it explains, I mean, again, it just brings out that sense of entitlement that he's had ever since he was little and how he views other people as pawns and, you know, not worthy. They're only worthy of being ruled by somebody like him. And there's nothing that people can do to change that because according to him, it's biological. Like you're either born into the right bloodline or you're not. I thought what Doflamingo did at the end was pretty smart, even though it didn't work. So he basically used spider web as a way to, to be able to withstand a punch and then, so that's a defensive mechanism. And then the offensive mechanism was to use the strings from the ground to try and hit Luffy that way. That's basically what the God Threat is. Uh, but if I were him, I probably would have invested some of that hockey and, and put it on myself. I've said this before when it came to the Naruto fight, but if you, if you take gravity into consideration, Luffy has the advantage because he's the one coming down. At least that's what I thought first. And then I actually saw the punch land and I'm like, yeah, that, that probably would not have mattered. <laughs> that attack should have been called King Kong in the mood to rape other gorillas gun. Does anybody realize that after this is over, the people in Dressrosa are not going to have anywhere to live? That shit doesn't even look like a punch anymore. It looks like an alien invasion laser beam that hits what's left of the city and tilts it in half. And of course, as most of you predicted, the shades are off. They shatter. I don't know if we're going to see his eyes next week, but if we are, they're probably going to look 
mad retarded. By itself, I thought this was a great, amazing chapter. I don't know if the time that it took us to get here kind of lessened my reaction to it. Tell me what you thought about this. Comment, you know what to do. Like the review if you did. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Subscribe to my channel. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Go, go, no!